Analytical Chemistry 1, Lesson 22. When a reaction vessel has reached equilibrium, the concentration of all participants is now fixed and does not change. Reactions are still happening just as quickly as before, but they are now all balanced with each other so that no more change to concentration is occurring. The task at hand is to be able to calculate the concentration of every species in the reaction at equilibrium. It involves identifying and solving a set of simultaneous equations. By simultaneous, we mean that all the equations must be satisfied at the same time by the same value for all of the variables. There must always be an, as many independent equations as there are unknown concentrations we need to find. There are three kinds of equations we must identify. Charge balance, mass balance, and chemical equilibria. We look first at the charge balance equation. Charge balance is a statement of the electroneutrality of the solution. There must be just as many negatively charged species as there are positively charged species. You are not able to have a solution that carries a net unbalanced charge. This equation involves any and all charged ionic species in the solution. If there are any electrically neutral species that are part of the problem, they do not participate in the equation. This expresses uh, this charge balance. Uh, the sum of negative charges must equal the sum of positive charges. Note that the concentration of each species appears multiplied by the magnitude of their charge. The concentration of a 3 plus ion such as aluminum 3 plus is multiplied by 3. Now, this should make sense in that each cation of aluminum brings a 3 plus charge to the solution. Similarly, the concentration of a 2 minus anion such as carbonate is multiplied by 2. Note that you do not multiply by minus 2 as we are trying to equate the two concentrations. Most of our problems will deal with aqueous solutions, solutions using water as a solvent. So while water is always present, it is neutral in charge so it does not show up in this equation. However, water always self-ionizes. It slightly dissociates to form a low concentration of both hydronium H plus and hydroxide OH minus ions. So for aqueous problems, these two ions must appear in the charge balance equation. Many other ions that might appear in solution often interact with water and its ions to make another ionic state accessible, and we need to consider it in our equation. Beyond this, we need to know the ways that any added species will dissociate upon sol solvation, and we need to know of any other forms of those ions that might react with water or each other to form other ionic species that have to be considered. Some examples. If you bubble some HCl gas through water, you end up with a solution of hydrochloric acid. The HCl will dissociate in water. Don't forget the water itself will self-dissociate. The charge balance equation is H plus equals OH minus plus chloride. Now we do not make a distinction between hydronium ions that came from water dissociation and those that came from HCl dissociation. We do not know yet how much came from each process, but we do know that their sum must equal the sum of hydroxide and chloride ions. These are all of the charged species in the vessel. It must be electrically neutral, and this charge balance equation must hold. Here's another example. An aqueous solution of calcium carbonate is formed, and some potassium perchlorate is added as well. The carbonate ion can react with water to form the bicarbonate ion, which can form a complex ion with calcium. The calcium can also form another complex ion with hydroxide. Here are all of the species you need to consider. Water, of course, always provides hydronium and hydroxide. Calcium carbonate dissociates to calcium 2 plus and, and carbonate 2 minus. The description reminds us that bicarbonate HCl3 minus is present. It also mentions a couple of other ions that form with calcium, the bicarbonate ion, calcium bicarbonate, and the hydroxide, calcium hydroxide ion. The potassium perchlorate releases the K plus and ClO4 minus ions. The charge balance equation asserts that the sum of positive charges must equal the sum of negative charges. Carbonate, bicarbonate, hydroxide, and perchlorate are the anions present. The rest are cations we would write the following. We have all the cations on one side and the anions on the other. Note also how the concentration of calcium ions is multiplied by two. This equation is about balancing charge. And since that ion brings two charges to the solution, we have to multiply its concentration by two. The same thing happens for the carbonate ion. Its charge is minus two. 
So we multiply its concentration by two also.